I think the biggest thing we can do is remove a lot of the noise from the rep's life. You really only want to communicate with them when you have something to say and something actually of value. If you communicate with them all the time and constantly, you can lose that kind of bang. My, my philosophy of every revenue operations is to actually maintain the level of empathy with the actual process. I think a lot of the revenue leaders, either in revenue or sales operations, can kind of get lost from the fact that, that sales is a hard gig, hard job. And my philosophy is to, to maintain that level of empathy uh, and, and push that through the um, initiatives you're trying to push, push out. And that might be to the customers, obviously, they have empathy with them and also out to the sales team. So remain humble and remain um, aware of that of what other people are feeling that's really interesting I, I hear a lot about people trying to understand the worldview of a rep but i hadn't quite heard it described in a way where you link empathy to the process itself i'm really keen to dig in and hear a bit more about how that really works yeah i, I think that uh definitely with um you, you, when you're in your revenue operations or a sales operations function you kind of um you kind of you kind of have to assume that every rep is, uh, or you kind of the, the approach I've seen previously is you assume that every rep is is really dumb, and or really not very um, intelligent, and they don't understand the processes you're trying to do. But I found that it's very not the case, and I think it's a lot to do with how you communicate with them. If you communicate them within a way, not just necessarily obviously tailoring the messages and all the other bits and pieces too, but if you can communicate with a level of empathy, you actually can get a lot of more trust with the with the the end users, and you can get a lot more output with the customer um, or, and with the customers through through that process as well. I think if we try to push things down all the time and, and try to assume a level of knowledge that we might have had over years of experience or years of, um, or, or deeper understandings, like our day job is to go through these files on data and revenue and, uh, analytics and to do that kind of stuff, where the sales team's job is meant to sell. And um, if we go in there with a, a, a high level theory that we expect them to come up to speak really quickly, then we can get ourselves caught, um, caught out and, and, and lose that trust with the, with the rep, which I think is really important. Okay, yeah, okay, so it's almost a translational element from the, the more complex analytics you're doing to making that simplified for the rep to understand. Yeah, take them on that journey. Don't, don't, don't expect them to have um, gone through the same level of insights that you've, you may have done. Yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense, right? So if we're thinking about then the high impact work we can do for the reps and the analytics we can do for them, that's really going to turn the needle, make a difference. Um, what are some of the ways we can simplify things? How do we bring these big complex data spreadsheets, whatever else we're using? Um, how, how do we make that digestible for reps then in your view? What, what's your method? So I think that the first thing is that digestion comes from a level of, um, digestion will come from if they value the actual product itself. So if they do not value what they what we're, what we're pushing out, then they won't consume it. So actually making it as digestible as like, if you're not actually pushing it into a way where the rep sees the value in that, then they're not going to use it no matter how you're actually going to pursue it. So making sure that actually that what we are pushing out, it makes sense. And I think the biggest thing we can do is remove a lot of the noise from the rep's life. Like only communicate really like we would do with our customers. It's kind of like an unsub managing unsubscribe uh, on a marketing operation. So you, you really only want to communicate with them when you really have something to say and something actually of value. If you communicate with them all the time and, and constantly, um, you can kind of lose that, um, that, that kind of bang um, in, in your messaging, particularly when it comes time for processes changes. I think if you're only communicating them about the Oh, I don't know, make sure you keep your call times above this slide, but make sure you touch on this. You're actually doing all those, communicating those on a regular basis. You can kind of lose the benefit when you want to start to roll out processes changes, particularly with your CRM or introducing new new items. And uh, you could have to make those trade-offs between, okay, I can either go bug this one rep about uh, increasing their call call times or increasing their call volumes, or I can actually go a, a broadly and, and talk about a holistic approach to better data capture. And I can focus on, um, that that's a bigger bigger item rather than actually focusing on yeah to take to, to, to making some prioritization calls about what you're actually talking to the reps about yeah okay so it's policing versus adding value 
Yeah, I don't like that word policing because I think <laughs> you call the police when things are in trouble. I'd like to think we're kind of like the yeah. ambulance, I think is um, yeah. the, the word you call, like you're there all the time and you're there when someone is in trouble uh, and then you're actually trying to help them um, to get back on their feet or to get more help, yeah. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, what we're kind of breaching into here is the idea of being really proactive in robots, aren't we? Like we're going with good information that's going to turn the needle that can make a difference rather than, as you said, just being the ambulance all the time. Um, yeah. Famously hard to do being proactive, especially when we're so busy and there's so much going on, Rowan. Um, so how do we manage our time priorities? How do we make sure we're being proactive in a world where so many requests are coming to revenue operations and there's always so much to do? Yeah, I, I think the proactive element um, and also too, when you when you are being proactive, sometimes you have to be aware that, that the person might not be ready to listen. So you might be proactively, but they're not actually ready to accept that call. So I think the open door policy is where we try to, to come to try to build that level of trust and not always do we talk to the reps about one thing. We might talk to them just about generally how their life was and, and then generally build that trust up where they can feel open to come to us. But the proactive side of it is really what I like about the revenue operations function where I see that the main comment differences are between the sales operations function and revenue operations function is you kind of that few steps ahead and you have a bigger remit to actually um, to affect the actual uh, the you know, entire outcome. So I, I think the way I like to be proactive is obviously consuming numbers, um, engorging in numbers and, and engorging in the facts. Uh, I listen to as many calls as possible. Um, I try to sit on as many demos as possible. Um, so it's again, consuming more information. And then I like to, um, I kind of like do a daily, um, what would tomorrow look like um, if this keeps happening um, uh, every week, so not daily, but every week I do, what would tomorrow look like if this, it's week, if this week started rolled through? And then I ask myself the questions, do I need to go and speak to someone about this to make it not happen? Or is this going to be a big impact? Again, again, prioritizing whether if I find something that's, I think my or a niggling problem, I'll probably wait till it's an actual problem before I actually raise it. Cause I do want to make sure that message is um, obviously, but there's anything that I, feel like it's necessary I bring up early, I kind of bring up early. Okay, so that's fantastic. So we do a hypothetical piece here. We almost project into the future. If we keep on seeing this trend, what might the impact of that be? So that the moment when we decide we do see that trend, we have an idea of what the impact is going to be, Rowan. Um, what does that conversation go like go with marketing, sales leadership? Really interested to see the next stage of that that hypothetical almost yeah. experiment you're running. So usually I try to get a second opinion, but I seek out with peers and get a second opinion on this is what I'm thinking. What do you think this is going to happen? And if I can explain to them that what my thinking was and get the point, then, then we'll start to stretch that out. And that could mean that I see the reps aren't filling out this field on the sales force. If we made it, do we change? If we, if we continue not getting that, we're going to lose our quality of data. Do we need to re-enable it? Or it might be... I don't know, we, do we need this form? It's not being filled out. We're not using the data in any reports. It's, uh, can we can we take it out of the our sales process? So it's actually it obviously multidisciplinary where we're going. Or it could be with finance saying uh, revenue trajectory is going through the floor or through the roof. Um, and we needed to address that through um, additional head counsel or, or, or additional capacity building ex activities. Mm. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And the, the good point about this, Rowan, is it raises the question between RevOps and how it partners with, with sales leadership, for example. Um, I think everyone has a different approach here, right? Some people like to be further packed. Some people like to be more involved. Um, for you, what does a really great partnership with sales leadership look like? And to what extent should revenue operations be involved um, in, in how they execute? I really think we need to be involved as closely as possible with the revenue function. Um, I kind of like, I see revenue operations sitting as that glue between a lot of different departments. And I think that's, that's been said a lot of times. Um, like we do sit on the technical side. We do, we do usually manage the CRM. We do manage the marketing operations. We do, we do all that other bits and pieces, but as close as we can to the sales arm gives us the closest we can to the customer, my, my, my mind. So either that be through account management or through account executives. Um, so if we're clo the closer we are to that, the more understanding we have. And then that level of empathy, if we roll that through as well, it allows us to make better decisions and more informed decisions about what we're doing uh, with their customers um, and, and, and event where we are going to as a company. Yeah, interesting. So I feel up, up front and um, as close as possible to the, um, to, the, to the sales leaders. Yeah, okay. So, so lots of this works on having a really good relationship. From that relationship, we have the understanding of what's happening. 
100%. So I've got sales operations managers in each of the regions we have here. Uh, so revenue operations managers, sorry. And they sit on the sales leaderships of, of, of those regions and they, they're in there, they're developing the strategies and they're, they're assisting in the um, the day to day. They're seen as like a two IC to the to the sales director or the VP of, of um, sales. And they can actually be a seen as a tool rather than actually being seen as, a, as, an, as an impasse, which is a lot of times where sales operations kind of sits. Yeah. Yeah, okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, so when we project this upwards, Rowan, then, because we've done great pieces here on your reps, great pieces here on the sales leadership. Um, but when we think, excuse me, when we think to the C level, perhaps the CEO, um, obviously they create their strategy, they create their vision, that gets disseminated amongst the organization. And what role should ops play in spreading that message, that mission, and making that something that people can actually execute, do you think? Yeah, I think there's a lot of time to come in really early. And I think uh, uh, really early in the actual creation of that vision and processes as much as possible. I've, I've be, everyone's been in companies where they've pushed down visions that um, haven't always been practical or, or possible um, in a lot of cases. But luckily here, we've always been pretty practical about how we um, roll out our, 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 um, our goals or our missions. Um, and actually, the, the, our goal is to probably break that down into smaller chunks and into to consumable pieces for everyone to understand, not just, um, and for including ourselves, like, if we're talking about revenue growth or increasing our numbers, and we need our job is to take that number and to break it down into smaller chunks. I mean, okay, this means this many customers for a month, this means we can make this many calls, this many, and really break it down into consumable um, pieces so everyone to understand. And our job is to sell. So I think a lot of times um, revenue operations teams will sit back and think, oh, the selling's not my job. But in this case, this is where you're the sell, this is your salespeople. This is your time to sell in the company's mission, the company's goals, and actually sell, um, sell, sell where we're going as a company. Um, and if you're not selling it, then you're not believing it. And if you're not believing it, then you're probably not, you're not, you're not, we're not doing the best we can for the company. Yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah. So internal selling is really important then as well to get people on board. Uh, definitely i think if yeah if you're not selling then you're um being sold to uh, that's my my, my, my motto <laughs> yeah good one <laughs> i like that um i want to come back to this empathy and the processing it's it's one of the most interesting approaches i've heard to this actually and it's it's a very specific way of putting it i hadn't heard of before um so it, it's just interesting right because when when you when you look at the data when you look at the number you look at the analytics you have lots of quantitative information um, but then you're, you're combining that with qualitative information. Um, and I'm interested to hear how those conversations go when you do reporting, for example, because it's not like you can just show people the facts. Um, there's more nuance, isn't it, when you're doing that? Um, so I'm really interested to hear that, how that goes and how you create a clear picture for people on, on what's happening when there's more nuances. Yeah, no, I think, I think my, my history um, and where I've come from probably leads to where I go. So I've come from a sales background and I think a lot of sales operations kind of guys have and come through that process. Um, but I think in the reporting is where it becomes really hard because you, in revenue operations, you're generating leaderboards and leaderboards come with a level of um, expectation. If you're not on top of the leaderboard, then you're not doing well. And mm -hmm. that's not always the case. Uh, I think that if we look at the metrics we push out, um, it's important to have those uh, that empathy build, and the way I do that through in a metrics point of view is to have cover all. So um, it might not be you're the top of the lit of the revenue board, but you, if you're top of the call board, or you are you top of the the minute, minute number of minutes, or you or you leading the uh, other metrics, and having ones that having metrics that cover all. So most rep, we don't want every rep to be um, thinking they or great at everything, and obviously they will always have something to focus on. But if we have that level of empathy, we actually say, okay, well, you're not on top of the revenue board, but that's because you, you, um, you last month you weren't on top of the call board, but this month you are. So next month we should see your forecast come through and actually start to actually make that as a tool for them to actually start saying, okay, well, if I, if I get on top of this metric, I'll get on top of that metric. And you actually see them jumping and skipping um, their way up to the top and being the best rep they can. Yeah, okay. It's almost like we can redefine what success might look like in sales, which is uh, actually quite fascinating point, right? Because traditionally that might be, you know, you book the most revenue. Um, yeah. But you've been in sales, you're now in revenue operations. If we take a philosophical look at this, um, what can success in sales look like? Yeah. 
I, I, I do believe that it comes down to a great customer experience. I think mm -hmm. that I've seen the best reps who, so the seen as the best reps who be able to close deals and keep closing have probably been the worst salespeople as far as what, what the company needs. They're not providing a good sales experience. They're not providing uh, um, adequate information to the customer and sometimes, but they're really good at closing and driving that deal to a close. The best salespeople I see have, will take that time with the customer, will make sure the customer is actually um, is covered information is covered with the customer and that the customer is a right fit for the company and that they're not they're not thinking about okay let's get the um, most revenue out of them they're actually thinking about um, what is best for this customer and that's where I think is a good salesperson and usually they're they're near or thereabouts up, up top and achieving your revenue targets as well they might not always be smashing them out of the park but they're they're achieving their hundreds and tens 120 percent um, pretty regularly and there for me, and the consistency is probably the big part of it um, for me as well. So, yeah, I think it's definitely how you structure your commissions plans and how you structure your, your rewards season can kind of can kind of drive the behaviour of the of that rep as well. Um, and so you need to be really careful that you're actually rewarding for this good behaviour, this 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 time taken, or with the retention metrics, or with additional. Um, rewards for different behaviors. You're not always seen as um, giving the rewards to the person who brings in the most revenue each month because those customers might not be here for next year or the year after, but you know that the rep who brought in maybe 20K less, um, their customer's gonna be here for another few years because they've had a good onboarding experience. Yeah, that's 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 very true, especially in the world of SaaS, right? It's not just about Definitely. closing the deal. Yeah, that's, that's where the, I suppose the, the more broad-minded revenue operations um, role would, would be really thinking about that. 100%. I think that if we're not focused across the entire customer journey, then we're not, we're not revenue operations. We're back to sales operations. And that, that's where I think it's, um, that's where I see that again, another distinction between revenue operations and sales operations is we're not, we're not just throwing it over the fence, uh, for someone else to handle. We're actually trying to make sure that customer, um, stays with us as long as possible, gets the most value out of the product and, and we get the most value out of that customer. Yeah, for sure. I wanted to return to that idea of consistency in reps. It's famously difficult to get reps yeah. to perform at, like consistent, consistently. So what's the mindset that a consistent rep lives by and what enablement pieces does revenue operations provide to help them be consistent too? Yeah, I, I think that the re-enablement is probably the biggest thing for consistency. I think that um, you're making sure that you're not just... Um, you enable it once, you enable it multiple times. I think it's a big, big part for how we can help as an enablement for reps. I think particularly if you get um, a rep become, becomes complacent is probably the easiest way to not become consistent. And the and that's where we're trying, always trying to drive the different metrics and the different processes across that um, that, that journey. So obviously met, everyone's got KPIs and everyone, every revenue operations guy's got KPIs, but actually keep it continually to evolve those and share those with your sales leaders to actually say, okay, well, here's where this rep can improve. This way is how we keep our reps to be consistent. Um, a big thing is around how we target as well. So I think targeting has a big play, part to play in keeping a rep's um, level of motivation in consistency. Uh, I've been in places and I've done it myself where we've kind of pushed up targets to, because we knew this rep could handle it and we kept pushing and pushing and pushing to that rep was only ever achieving the just hitting a hundred percent. But we did it because they knew that rep could do it. Um, well, I think it's important to actually say this rep who's consistently doing this well, it actually should target them equally with their peers. So they actually start still getting rewarded um, for their efforts, um, not actually always, um, the target's not always chasing them. So I think that's a big part of actually maintaining a consistent level of performance. So they know that they're, they're not have to going to put everything into this month because next month their target's going to go up again. Um, they're actually saying, okay, well, I won't push this customer to a close now. I will push it into the next month because um, I know my target's going to be there or thereabouts, or at least communicating that target out in a well and ahead advance. So they know what it's going to be. Okay, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep pushing people, keep developing them. Um, That's yeah, right. yeah. yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Final question for you, Rowan. If you're in a room full of RevOps superstars, what would you ask them? Um, I would probably, I'd probably, I'm a bit of a tech guy, so I'd probably go strictly to um, how they're managing their CRM and where, where they, and how they, how they are gaining adoption with their CRM teams. Uh, and I probably probably start to talk about the commission schemes and where and how they incentivizing their reps. I think it's a, it's usually a, it's a pretty interesting topic.